We're here today at Remston Forest and we're here to look at some prescribed burning that we've done quite recently. The prescribed burning or controlled burning or the traditional term is swaling was done with the Purbeck Heath National Nature Reserve Swaling Team which is made up of a group of different landowners from conservation bodies, ourselves, Forestry England and, and other bodies that manage land in the National Nature Reserve. We've got a small team that carry out prescribed control burning in the winter months to manage habitats. The key thing is that these prescribed or controlled burns are fairly small in size. It's about creating patches of habitat management both to manage the habitat, to remove the vegetation layer, but also to reduce the fuel loading. What we don't want is high fuel loadings within our heathlands and our forests that then give rise to catastrophic events like the, for instance, the Wareham Forest fire that happened recently. Those burns, those wildfires, are what we term as as hot burns, they're incredibly damaging. They can go into the ground, they can destroy species and plants and whole ecosystems. Incredibly bad for the environment. These cold burns or prescribed burns are about creating patches, reducing fuel load and doing it at the right time of year. We do it in the winter where the risk to wildlife is, is, is greatly reduced because the reptiles will be hibernating into the ground layer um, and when the burn goes through, if you're doing it at the right time, the burn will just cut, go across the top of the ground, taking out the vegetation layer like you're seeing behind me. But if you dig down into the humus layer, just beneath the surface of the vegetation, it's still intact because it's still quite moist. Um, so it's protected in that way. And the scale of the burns, just doing small patches in a much larger habitat scenario, means that the, the risks are much lower. When it comes to carrying out the prescribed burn, there's an awful lot of pre-planning that's involved. We need to be looking at weather forecasts for the day. We also need to be making sure we've got all the resources we need for the day. We've got a team of qualified and experienced individuals and a shared resource of equipment. Um, we'll generally have two teams, an ignition team and a suppression team. And the suppression team, they will need fogging units and water tenders and beaters. And they're there to, to monitor the burn and make sure the burn doesn't go into adjacent habitat. To help with that process, we'll also have done some pre-burn work with the creation of fire breaks, um, which is basically short mown vegetation where you're reducing the fuel and you're encircling the area you're gonna burn. Um, so with a fire break all the way around the burn, that hopefully ensures that you're not going to have fire escaping into nearby vegetation. We also carry out a test burn on the day. So that's really to, to look at the exact fire behaviour on the day itself. And so what we'll do is we'll get a, a very, very small patch of vegetation um, like that and just see how the fire is behaving and it's a great way of checking the exact wind conditions as well. On some of the burns, we've also done some work with Exeter University and they've been doing some data collection, monitoring the, the rate and spread of the spread of fire and also looking at um, fire behavior. And this is really helping with a national understanding of fire behavior and really helping with wildfire management and understanding how the climate's changing and how that's changing fire behaviour.